Hey guys, Joe Pye here, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the shop. Happy 4th of July. It is 4th of July today, 2025. And got a couple minutes on my hands. The shop is not running today, so I figured I'd come in and I would catch up on something that I should have caught up on 25 years ago or more. Because <laughs> you know, if you have a shop in your garage or your house or you just like to tinker, there is that one thing that every time you run across it, you're going to say, man, I wish I had this. I'll do it next time. And the next time turns into a career and then you finally say, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make a video of it. Well, today's little project is a tap guide. This little guy right here. I'm going to take this apart for you. I'm going to show you what makes that tick, and it works really well. But the drawback is this has a half-inch diameter body on it right there. Boom, half-inch, which means it fits fine in a big chuck. But if you're doing small work, model work, which you probably saw a couple videos on this channel of just that. When you're drilling tiny holes with a tiny chuck, and it comes time to tap that hole, well, guess what? Mr. Neural Tap Guide here doesn't fit in that little chuck, and you have to take the chuck off, put a collet in, or put the big chuck on, put this in the big chuck, and it becomes quite the ordeal. And it's a pain in the neck. And I have to admit, right hand to God, it's something that I've been doing forever. And it's just, it's one of those things that every time I do it, I got to fix this, man. I got to make it fit the little chuck. So I was going to make a whole brand new tap guide. But I figured, why reinvent the wheel? I already have the guts here. So let's fix this. Let's put this on the bench, take a look at what makes this tick, and go to the lathe and fix it. All right, here's the tap guide. This is a spring-loaded tap guide. This is a Nirol brand, N-I-R-O-L, and I have had this thing forever. You can probably find these relatively cheap. If you find one, do this with it. Take it apart. I also have a bunch of different size springs for different size taps. You don't want to really bear down on an 080 tap with the same spring you're going to use for a half 13. Take the point out and see if you have a cup on one end and a point on the other. A lot of people don't know this feature exists, and they spend their whole life going, well, gee, I wish I had a point on it. Well, take it apart, turn it around, and now you have a point on it. The problem with this little unit is, well, it's not a problem because I like this unit, and I would recommend it, is you can't stick it in a quarter-inch collet. If you have a quarter-inch max capacity holding device on your machine, you're out of luck. But... We have threads, and we have a cap screw, or grub screw, set screw, plug screw, whatever you want to call it. And I figure if I make a little stand adapter with that thread on it, I can screw it in, have a quarter inch extension on it, grab a hold of this, and the body of this device will never enter the quarter inch chuck, just the little stem on the end. Now in order not to restrict the plunger motion, I will also drill out the inside of this little extension so that the stem can go up inside of it. There's plenty of room. This is a 3 8 24 thread. This is a 500 OD, and this should be a relatively quick, simple, and super efficient little fix that I can brag took me 25 years to make. <laughs> Actually, 24 years and 364 days to get to, 30 minutes to make. Let's go over to lathe. Get it done. Project starts off with half inch diameter 303. We're going to turn the quarter inch diameter stem on it that will ultimately be what you're holding on to. And if you want to creep up on something, don't take long passes like that. Make a little nub on the end, measure it, and take a pretty good bite. Make sure that the part is cool enough and the finish is smooth enough to give you an accurate reading when you creep up on your final dimension. Little chamfer on the front, little break edge on the back. Next thing I'm going to do is come in here with a parting tool and cut that off to the final length. And be careful if you ever put your fingers on a parted part because it could helicopter and pinch your fingers against the tool block. So make sure you know what you're dealing with. Setting the stop on the carriage here so that the tool repeats to a shoulder. This is the major diameter of the thread, looking for 375. On a 3 8 thread, 375 would be the max diameter you want. You could probably go five, seven thousandths under that, and it's still going to be just fine. Thread is driven by the pitch. A 
going to put a little bit of a lead on the front of this because I'm not a big fan of locating anything concentric on a threaded diameter. So I'm going to use the lead on that as my concentric feature. The plunger mechanism inside the tap guide is 187, so I'm going to put a 188 reamed hole in this. And a lot of people say, why do you use a center drill instead of a spot drill? Well, pressure is the answer. The web of the drill is what gives you the most pressure initially, so if you can start that hole before the pressure kicks in and throws the drill off, well, so be it. I always ream at half the speed that I drill on, and continuous motion, in you go. So far, so good. Undercut tool to assure that we have a thread relief and a nice square corner. And I'm doing this by eye. I'm going to make that relief smaller than the lead diameter on the front of the part because I know that that's the size of the hole. Ultimately, when I thread this, the thread will encounter probably both of these features. I'm going to set the carriage stop in the back, lock it down, and I'm going to advance the compound to position the tool right there. But that's the only time I'm going to use the compound for this. Everything else is plunge cut. Little contact on the outside to let me know exactly what number of my tool threading is starting on. And you can take the largest cuts initially when you thread because the load on the tool is less, load on the part is less. I edit out the redundant cuts here. These are about 5,000 piece. And I guess I made 10 passes, give or take, before I got the thread that I liked. When you deburr a thread like that, run it forward and reverse. You'll see me do that here in a second. Because if there are hairs or fibers on these threads, you want those fibers to lay down and stand up and be removed accordingly so that they don't lock your part down. Here's forward. Come on with the reverse. There's reverse. So the half inch drill guide fits good in a bigger chuck. No problem whatsoever. And if you're saying, well, just use a bigger chuck for the smaller drills, not all big chucks close down to the size of the wire drills you're going to need. So when you try to stick this in a smaller chuck and it doesn't work, no good. Take the set screw out, put the little adapter on that we just made. Now plan accordingly because I never like dropping the table during an operation when I'm working on a part, so know that your tools are going to be a little bit longer. And away you go. Perfect. I should have done this years ago. I'll take it out, take a quick look at what it looks like assembled. It looks like an edge finder. I like it. Well, if you're still here, I've got a couple more things to share with you. This is called a thread pitch gauge set. If you've never seen one of these things, they're pretty cool to have in your toolbox. Pick one up at a flea market or go online and get one. Pitches are stamped into the individual leaves here. That's how I identified the set screw. Measure the OD, get the pitch, make the adapter. Make the OD of whatever set screw that you're going to measure. Because although it might look like a 3 8 screw, it could very possibly be a 10 millimeter screw. So don't trust your eyes. Do the math. This little guy right here was single pointed 3 8 24. And I have to believe that you could probably make one of these in a pinch. Out of a bolt. So go to your local hardware store, get a 3 8 24 bolt or whatever size bolt fits in the end of your tap guide, and get past your problem. That's something I should have made a long time ago and just never took the time to do it. Right? Like the plumber's faucet always leaks. No kidding. So there you go. Happy Fourth of July to you if you're still here. Thank you for spending some of your day with me. Actually, this is going to post tomorrow, which is the 5th of July, but since I'm making it on the 4th and we're not together, happy 4th to you. Hope you still got all your fingers. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well, happy, and safe, all of the above. Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. 
I'm out.